Hi everyone, welcome to Relatively Refined. In today's video, you're going to get to watch me play around with some flowers and spring decor. I will share a couple of thrifted items that I'm currently obsessed with. I'm going to tell you a story that confirmed why I love and don't hesitate to pick up and collect the single decorative plates. I'm also going to share a serendipitous spring color combination that I'm currently enjoying. And stay tuned until the end for a fantastic viewer submission in our Relatively Refines segment. So sit down, relax, and let's get started. I wanted to share with you a few thrifted items that I am currently obsessed with. And um, early on, very early in our YouTube channel, I did a video called, I think it was called Three Things or Items I Do Not Leave Behind in the Thrift Store. I will link it above. But today I wanted to share with you um, what I'm currently not leaving behind and am actively hunting for. And if you look on the screen, I'm playing around um, with some pussy willows that I picked up at Trader Joe's. And if you look on the screen, you can see um, to my left some glass flower frogs. And I actually was able to use my newest one. You'll see I'm grabbing it right there. And I put it in my um, champagne bucket and it worked perfectly for putting these pussy willows in. So flower frogs is something that I am currently kind of obsessed with in all shapes and forms. They are very practical and they are also beautiful. And most importantly for me currently, they don't take up much space. So the items, the my current obsessions, the two that I'm gonna share with you are items that don't take up a lot of space in terms of storing. So they pack a lot of punch. You get a lot of bang for your buck. They're pretty practical and easy to store. So this particular one worked perfectly for putting these pussy willows in. And you'll notice I am not using water. Again, I'll link another video that I made early on about pussy willows. I did try to propagate them by putting some in water. I was not successful, but in this case, because I don't want them to mold, I just want them to last, I am just simply putting them dry into that flower frog. And that is a recent purchase, and I will link that video as well where you can see where I, what I paid for that and where I got it. But that one I'm really enjoying because it is very thick. It's perfect for these tall, thick stems. It really holds them in place, and I'm enjoying that. And they are bringing me so much joy because they are small, they're beautiful, they're easy to store, and they're so functional. So my very favorite glass one is in the um, in with my pussy willows, but I have a couple other glass ones that I want to show you. These two I thrifted for I I want to say this one was like a quarter. And I think this one was from an antique store, so it was a little bit more, I wanna say five or six dollars. So they serve different purposes. This one is flat. So this one is perfect for, let me show you a black here, for like um, more of a terrine style vessel, a low flat piece like this, where it can just go in and you can put um, smaller cut flowers in and it would look, fantastic in that um, and that's the beauty of this it can even be used in a, a platter anything that is shallow this will work great it does have shallower holes so you have to plan accordingly like this would not have worked great for my pussy willows because they really needed a thick deep hole but this has been beautiful to display and it's very useful and then my other glass one is this frosted glass one. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll hold it up, but it's it's frosted. 
and it's almost um, spherical and it has very deep holes. So this works great for um, narrow stems that you really need to stand up tall because this is nice and deep. And this also works great for paint brushes or it can be used as a paperweight. I can show you like a paperweight, grab a pen, um, with a paperweight with a, just a pen inside of it like that on a desk. You can also use this for, um, in serveware, you could put skewers or toothpicks in these uh, or anything like that. So this has been a very useful one. This was the very first flower frog I ever thrifted and I love it. And then at a recent trip to the thrift store, I found two of these spiky flower frogs. These are incredibly heavy and there are two different shapes. One is round and one is this really pretty oval shape. And I have been enjoying, I also have this one, which I think I may have shown before. This one is really small. It's maybe the size of a half dollar. And these all work great for different things. You can of course use them for their intended purpose, which is for florals. But I really like to show them to display cards. I really love, uh, my mom is fantastic about sending me cards and I just hold on to them forever. And I love to keep them in flower frogs because they don't blow away when you open and shut the door. And they really become like little works of art. The tiny one can fit in a little teacup. You could display something. I have used them next to my gardening area for seed packets to remind me what they are. And I think they're actually so pretty. I really do. They're heavy and old looking and I'm just really enjoying them. So these are an item that you can collect. It doesn't take up much space. You can keep them in a drawer, a little basket. You can display them or not but they're fun to pick up and i have also uh, my sister paula found one inside of a vase so if you're out thrifting look inside the vases you know you can purchase the vase with the flower frog in it um and it uh they're kind of hidden this little guy was like on a shelf just with the florals but um it wasn't marked i think somebody had pulled it out of a vase so it's a fun thing to look for. They're extremely useful and pretty to display. And I have sure been enjoying finding these. They don't take up much room either. My next item that I don't leave behind at the thrift stores are scarves. They are um, kind of like the one-off dishware of clothing. So I tend to have a very basic wardrobe and I feel like nothing more affordably can dress up an outfit or change it up or springify it like a scarf. And they're usually like a dollar or two at the thrift store. This one I'm showing you is a recent one I picked up for a dollar. I love it. It is silk and this one works great. You can tie it on a purse, which is a great way to just add a little color to your outfit. Also, if you're wearing it around your neck and it's irritating you or you're warm, you can just then tie it on your purse. I have put them on suitcases, carry-on bags, different things. You can tie it in a little bow and um, suddenly you kind of go from, you know, just a everyday drab outfit to a little bit of color or um, a little bit of elevation. And most of these in this basket are recent. This is another one I picked up. Um, it's a nice big one. And what I like to use these for are shawls. So over the summer, if you get invited to a party or like my son's graduation, I have a navy dress I'm wearing. And so this one will kind of work as a shawl. It will cover up my upper arms and um, provide a little bit of coverage and I think it's very pretty. I'm pretty sure that one was also a dollar. Has a pretty fringe detail and greens and purples and blues, which are nice spring colors. 
Here's another one that I thought was interesting. And this one I would probably kind of wear around my neck, fold it in a, um, it's a square shape, I believe. So I would sort of fold it into a triangle and tie it around my neck. See, I'm struggling with this a little bit, but you get the idea. That would sort of go around my neck. Um, this one is, I know this one is an Ann Taylor one. This is an infinity scarf, which I find to be the easiest to throw on. So in the fall, winter, and early spring, I just throw them on around my neck and put a jacket on over it. And it just gives a little bit of color, a little bit of something when I'm sick of my heavy black jackets. This one I'm showing you now is a really beautiful silk scarf. And I actually, I can't remember the name on this, but this was a um, a brand that, that actually is quite popular, sells for quite a bit. And this one I would just probably tie around my neck as I'm doing and tie it around the front and kind of tuck underneath to create a little bit of color with maybe like a plain black shirt or a white blouse just to add a little bit of style to an existing outfit and I'm a huge fan of pink so I think that would be a great piece for the basic outfit. This is another one that is great for tying on a bag. I wish I had a different bag to show you but this pink one I can envision tied on a beach bag and then it can also be used um, at the beach like if you want to tie it over your head to cover up your scalp or whatever to protect it a little bit from the sun. That's an option as well. So I'm really enjoying, okay, so I do need to be on the hunt now for um, a beautiful box to put them in. I think a thrifted hat box would be really nice for my scarf collection instead of the plastic Dollar Tree um, basket that I have them in. But at any rate, I would encourage you to go to your thrift store and look for scarves. They also can be great decor pieces and super great way to elevate your outfits. Finally, I wanted to share with you a story, and it has to do with something else I really enjoyed finding, which will be of no surprise to you. And I call them one-off plates, or that's the term I use for those random plates that you find all over the thrift stores that don't have a mate, and they're just sitting on the shelf, but they're so beautiful, you can't leave them there but you find yourself going, that's not my pattern. What am I going to do with it? And I think I have shown you in several videos that time and time again, I find these plates and I use them for all kinds of things. I use them under cloches. I use them for spoon rests. I put candles on top of them. I use them for little candy dishes. I use them in so many ways and they are truly the most affordable way I can think of to change out decor for the seasons, to make a gathering special, and they really are very handy. Well, I have a story for you. This beautiful plate, which is made in Germany, it is continental ivory and it is so pretty. It came to our family in the mail um, on Valentine's Day or right around Valentine's Day with a very sweet note that I wanted to share with you and see if this might inspire you to think about these one-off dishes in a different way. So the note um, is from just a little backstory. My mother-in-law, who is no longer with us, sadly, grew up, um, she was an only child, and her parents, particularly her father, was older when she was born. He was in his 50s, and he was a physician, and she was a very doted on child because she came later in life, she was the only child, and she was the absolute apple of her parents' eye. But consequently, because they were older when she was born, she was actually orphaned at a young age. I believe before she even left for college, she both of her parents had passed. 
So she had a tremendous amount of dishware. <laughs> she had a tremendous amount of other things too. But her mother had many, many beautiful sets of china from her wedding and just collections that she had obtained over the years. And they were passed down to my mother-in-law, Mary, who, again, she was an only child, so she had it all. And somehow she managed from a very young age to hold on to these dishes. And as she became older, she started to give them away. So this plate, which was mailed to us on Valentine's Day, came with a beautiful note, which I won't share the whole note, but a few things that I thought were very interesting. Um, it was addressed to my husband and family, happy Valentine's Day. And she says, your mom was giving away her mom's, your grandmother's, would be my husband's grandmother's, dishes to special people. I kind of remember she only had eight. You so kindly expressed that I was on your mom's short list of friends, so I got one. And then she goes on to talk about other people who got them. And then she said, I have treasured this plate for probably over 50 years. It's been in Vermont, of course, California, and the last 32 years in Minnesota in my dining room hutch. Please accept it with love from your grandmother, mother, and me this Valentine's Day. After reading that note, I was really inspired to think about this plate and to maybe create a new tradition or um, some way of honoring uh, my mother-in-law. And I thought with this beautiful spring pattern on it, this may become uh, a dish that we bring out every Easter and put a special Easter dessert on. I really like to make a, a lemon bundt cake and I think it would be perfect on this. So it really inspired me in thinking about all those single plates that we see how you may incorporate those either into your home or a special gathering or holiday or memory or to give to somebody else so they can begin to create their own. I wanted to share with you a um, funny thing that happened. I was, I picked up some tulips at Trader Joe's and I really wanted orange tulips. When I bought them, they were closed up and I thought they were going to be orange and I wanted like dark orange. Well, when they opened up, you can see they're this really pretty unexpected apricot color and maybe coral apricot. So I put them in this pitcher and I put them on my, um, my Wedgwood plate and I kind of noticed in the plate like, oh wow, look, there's that green and there's that pretty apricot color. And then I began putting um, together a little Easter display that I do every year, which is I take this compote and I use this particular one because the sides sort of look like, um, kind of look like an egg, like a cracked egg. Um, so I put, I pulled that out and typically I do like a bright pink or yellow Easter grass, but I had this Easter grass, well, these are kind of like paper shreddings that came with a package I ordered. And I thought I would use those this year because they were like a natural color. So when I put those in and I put my moss bunny that I put every year inside it and when to put that on the table, it was like, oh my goodness, look at the colors. It's that exact kind of apricot color with green. So I just thought that was so funny and serendipitous. And then I realized that I've been holding on to this card I received, um, gosh, months ago. And the card has the exact colors. And for whatever reason, I've been holding on to it because I just, those colors spoke to me. And would you look at that? They're the exact color. Those are poppies on the card. There's that kind of um, coral apricot color and the greens and the whites. And so when I put this all together, it was like, I just couldn't believe it. So that was my little serendipitous Easter tablescape story. Today's relatively refined comes from viewer Jane, who found this absolutely incredible Johnson Brothers Friendly Village 
pitcher for $13 at the Goodwill. Jane, I am absolutely drooling over this. I adore the Johnson Brothers Friendly Village pattern and this is a fantastic score. Send us a photo and description to the email below of your pre-loved treasures so that we can feature them on an upcoming Relatively Refines segment. Thanks for watching.